So, um, visitors. So we're going to actually define the visitor interface inside the tree class. Um, so let me retype that. So public interface visitor. This is a reasonable decision because this interface is very tightly coupled to the tree class. We would never use it independently of it. I don't know. That's uh, not exactly true, but for the purposes of this example. Um, so let's write, it's going to have one method called visit, which is going to take a single parameter, which is a reference to an object that's the data of the node that we're visiting. Okay. Let's add a, a, a Java dot comment to make clear what it is this method does. This method is called for each visited node. So every time our tree in one of its traversal methods visits a node, it's going to call the visit method on the specified visitor. And the data is the data, oops, the data of the node being visited. My fingers are cold. It's hard to type. All right, there we go. So any class can implement the visitor interface and thereby implement the visit method and then do whatever they want with that data, whatever types of, of algorithm they're looking for. All right, so that's part of the puzzle is creating the visitor interface. The other part is creating an additional method on the tree that traverses in a certain way. We could write one for pre-order. We could write one for post-order. In order doesn't really make sense because this isn't a binary search tree. This is our generic tree. But let's just do pre-order because it's almost the same as post-order. So public void pre-order. It's going to take a single parameter of type visitor. So it takes a reference to the visitor that's visiting each node in pre-order. I'll do another Java dot comment here. This method traverses this tree in pre-order. Pre it takes a single parameter V, which is the visitor to be invoked at each node. As we experienced yesterday, when we conceptually worked through the different tree traversals, they are, I think, inherently recursive. So we're going to implement this recursively, which probably doesn't surprise you at this point. Um, I think a recursive helper method is, is, again, the way to go. So I'm simply going to, in a moment, we will define a static private recursive method called pre-order, where we pass um, the node at the root of the tree. We're going to traverse in a pre-order fashion. and we're going to pass along the visitor. So now we can write our private static method called pre-order. Takes a node, a reference to a node and a reference to a visitor. So to kick this off, we pass along a reference to the root node and the same visitor. And then we will run through this in a pre-order fashion. Since we're doing this recursively, we still have to have our terminating condition, which is what is the easiest tree to traverse in a pre-order fashion? It's the empty tree. So if n equals null, meaning there is no, there are no nodes, we will simply return. We have nothing to do. That's our terminating condition. Oh, I'm sorry. I typed node v. That's a problem. I meant node n. Visitor v. There we go. Pre-order means visit the node first, then the children. Okay. Post-order is children first, then the node. So since this is pre-order, we first will invoke the visit method on the visitor that's passed to this method, and we'll pass along the data for the node that we are currently um, at the root of the tree that we're currently traversing. That's what makes it pre-order. 
once we do that, we then will recursively traverse in a pre-order fashion all the for each child in the list of children. So as a reminder, it's been a while. If I scroll up to the top here just for a second, this tree had each node has the data, and then each node has a list of children. So we're just going to use an enhanced for loop to iterate through each child in the list of children. So that's going to be n.children, the nodes children. And we will call the pre-order method with each child at the root of a new subtree, and we'll pass along the visitor. And what I love about the visitor pattern is this code only focuses on traversal and this interface can implement whatever algorithm we want. But since they're separate, this is all we have to write to do any combination that we want. We're not gonna take the time to write a post order method, but all it consists of is moving this line of code after we traverse the children, right? That's all post order is, just swapping this block and this block. So it's not too much to do. I still think this is a little abstract. So I wanna show you an example so you can actually see it run, which I think is helpful. So if you open up the traversal demo class, you can see I've got an example pre-written. It's just currently commented out. So let's uncomment it and then talk through this example. I'm building the same tree that we built before. Anne is at the root. Peter is child of Anne. Zara is child of Anne. Savannah is child of Peter. Okay, so that's our little part of our tree that we've been using. Here I'm implementing a class that implements the tree visitor interface. Um, you can actually implement a class right in the middle of another method. Um, you can even do so anonymously in some cases, but yeah, so just don't be thrown by that. This is permitted in Java. It's not super common, but here like, we're only gonna use this class right here with the visitor stuff. So it's not really worth putting in a whole separate file. Okay. This short name counter class implements the visitor interface and its job is gonna be, let's count how many nodes in the tree or how many elements in the tree have a string length less than or equal to five, right? Just to show how arbitrary the analysis can be. So it has an instance variable that keeps track of um, how many um, elements match that condition. This is the method it has to implement, which is the visit method. Just to help us visualize the whole pre-order traversal, I have us print the data um, of each element as we visit it. And then we check to see if the length is less than or equal to five. And if it is, we increment the counter. So that's our little short name counter visitor class. We immediately make one of those. And then we pass a reference to that to the pre-order method on the tree we already built. Hey tree, visit all, you know, traverse all your nodes in pre-order. At each node, call the visit method of this visitor object. And then we print out the value of the counter at the end. So if I run this, we can see the order in which we visit stuff in pre-order is Anne, root first, then Peter, then Savannah, Oops, sorry, Savannah, and then finally Zara. And out of all the nodes in the tree, three of them have names that are five letters or less, and Peter and Zara. And doing a different analysis is as simple as defining a different class, creating an object of that class and passing it to the pre-order method. That's all it takes. It's really kind of cool. 